It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all. Your views makes us very happy. Today, we are going to read the story titled The Cow on the Roof by Eric Mattern, illustrated by Paul Hess. Please like and subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to click on bell icon for new video updates. Once upon a time, there was a man called Sean and a woman called San. They lived in a little cottage on a hill. The roof of the cottage was covered with grass, green groaning grass. Every day Sean went out to the fields. Sometimes he plowed the soil, sometimes he sowed the seeds, sometimes he weeded the turnips, and sometimes he cut the hay. There was plenty to do, and he was always tired when he got home. But Sian, who stayed at home and worked around the farmyard, always seemed as fresh as a buttercup. After a while, Sean started to feel that he was the one doing all the hard work, and he began to grumble, he began to complain, he began to moan, at last Sian could bear it no longer, so she said, all right, Sean, if that's the way you feel, tomorrow I'll go out and do your work, and you can stay at home and do mine, great, said Sean, tomorrow I'll have a rest. I'll have a holiday, I'll have a day off. The next day, Sian went off with the scythe over her shoulder, and Sean stoked the fire, put his feet up and lit his pipe. Ah, this is the life, he thought, and he sat for two whole hours doing absolutely nothing. But suddenly Sean realized he had to make butter to go with their dinner time porridge. He knew how to make it, though he'd never actually done it himself, so he got the churn, poured in the cream, and began, turning and churning, turning and churning. After a while, he looked inside, just cream sloshing about, so he turned the handle faster still, turning and churning, turning and churning. Again he looked inside, still no butter. By now Sean was hot and tired, for a third time he turned faster than ever, turning and churning, turning and churning. But once again, still no butter, now Sean was really thirsty, I know, I'll go to the cellar, and pour a drink of ale. He went down, to the steps, into the cellar. There at the bottom, stood a keg of fine, homemade brown ale. He turned the tap, and began pouring the ale into a mug. Oh, it looked good. It had a dark color, a frothy head and a smell, that made his mouth water. He could hardly wait, but suddenly, there was loud bang, and a squeal and a clatter from upstairs. Oh no cried Sean, and he dropped the mug, and ran quickly back up into the kitchen. He'd left the kitchen door open, and there was the pig, it had knocked over the crun, spilled cream all over the floor, and was greedily lapping it up, Sean was furious, he booted the pig out of the kitchen, then looked at the mess, oh well, he said, shrugging his shoulders, gone is gone, Then Sean remembered, he had left the ale running from the key downstairs, he raced back down the steps, but it was too late, every last drop of ale was sloshing about on the cellar floor, oh no, this was terrible, far worse than spilling the cream, but there was nothing he could do about it, so he shrugged his shoulders once more and said, oh well, gone is gone. Sean went back into the kitchen, there was no more cream, but at least, he could still make the porridge, but first he had to roll the oats, so he took a tray, filled it with oats, found a special rolling pin, with grooves in it, and began to roll the oats, then outside in the barn, the cow began to moo. Oh dear, said Sean, I'll have to take the cow to the field. He left the oats, went to the barn, and put a rope around the cow's neck. 
He was just thinking about the porridge and how far it was to the field when he noticed, growing on the cottage roof, fresh juicy grass. I know, he thought, I'll put the cow on the roof. So Sean led the cow to the hill behind the cottage and put a plank to the roof. At first she wouldn't go up, but at last he coaxed her with a handful of sweet grass. Then he took the rope's end and dropped it down the chimney. I'll tie that off when I get down, just to be sure she's safe. <coughs> Sean left the cow munching away on the roof and went back to the kitchen. <coughs> oh no, he'd left the door open. And this time, the hens had come in, they'd found the oats scratched and scattered them over the floor, and they'd left chicken droppings, mixed in with the cream. Ugh, what a mess. <coughs> Sean shooed the chickens out, and then said to himself, Oh well, gone is gone. But he still had some oats, so he put them with water into a pot. He was stoking the fire, when he noticed the dangling rope, he grabbed the end and tied it round his ankle, thinking, now I'll know, what the cow's doing on the roof, and then he began to stir the porridge, the porridge was just starting to thicken, when the cow fell off the roof, Sean was yanked, by his ankle up the chimney, where he stuck upside down, outside, the poor cow was hanging, by her neck, her feet just touching the ground, crying, Muya, Muya. <coughs> Meanwhile, out in the fields, Sian had been working hard all day. She looked up at the sun and realized it was past her dinner time. So she began walking back to the cottage. When she came in sight of the house, there was the cow hanging off the roof. So she ran up to it, pulled the axe out of the chopping block, and chopped the rope. Inside, Sean fell headfirst down the chimney and into the pot of porridge. When Sian opened the door, there was Sean, with shoot up to his armpits, and porridge over his head. What a mess. Sane looked at the cream, and the oats, the chicken, and the pig droppings. She sniffed the ale, wafting from the cellar. Then she smiled and said, Oh well, gone is gone. But from now on, you stick to your work. I'll stick to mine, and we'll say no more about it. I'm sorry, my dear, I was wrong, said Sean. Your work is just as hard as mine. The next day, Sean strode off to the fields and never once complained again. Thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to click on bell icon to get new video updates.